Hi, everybody. I'm Kathy Smith, and I'm so grateful to have just been on the Online Prosperous Show. It was a fantastic conversation. We talked about where I started, how I can help you, what things small businesses need to know when they're thinking about their marketing, what things you might should be stopped to doing, what things really work for you. As a small business person, you can't be spread too thin. So listen to the episode and find out how to make the most for your marketing on the Online Prosperity Show. Welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, where we explore the secrets to success in the digital age. I'm your host, Prosper Tarubinga, and today I have a very special guest joining us. Kathy, how are you doing today? I am fabulous, and thank you for having me on. Fantastic. Now, Kathy has been in the business of creating marketing strategies for over two decades, and she's been helping small businesses thrive and achieve their goals. I want you to help me welcome Kathy Smith, who's a digital marketing agency owner and a marketing coach. And it really is a pleasure to have her on the show because she brings in a wealth of knowledge. And we've just been talking prior. Uh, she does seem to know her stuff. Now, Kathy, can you tell us a bit about your background and how you actually got started in the world of marketing? Sure. I, like a lot of ladies, had a baby and decided that I did not want to go back to corporate. I was doing an awful lot of hours and thought this business thing would be much easier route and would be better to have time with my baby. So 22 years ago, I started a digital marketing agency before digital marketing. So back then it was just a marketing agency. So we did yellow pages ads and flyers and newspaper ads and traditional marketing. And then as time went on, it evolved. Fantastic. I might as well just call you a tradigital marketing specialist because if you have transcended all the way from the yellow pages to now Google, and as of yesterday, Google might just not be the thing happening. You really, really um, have done the most. But what actually inspired you to then maybe focus on helping small businesses with their marketing efforts when you were coming from corporate? So I was involved in a corporate that worked in small businesses. So I was a printing sales rep. So we went around and helped people with their, their printing. And back in the day, printing was quite different to what it is now. So it was quite complicated, very expensive. So I got to go into a lot of small businesses. So it just seemed like a, a natural progression that when I started my business, I would help small businesses and it started because one person wanted help with their printing. Fantastic. And you really, um, you know, brought that to life, especially with what you're doing right now. But why do, you, why do you believe that so many business owners actually struggle with maybe ineffective marketing strategies that are out there? There's a few different reasons. Some of them, they unfortunately get bad advice. So they go and see somebody who's only interested in putting money in their own pockets and not in the pockets of their, their clients. If we all can make the pie bigger, we're all going to prosper as opposed to trying to grab hold of one little pot and not give it to anybody. The other thing is they spread themselves too thin. They want to do everything for everybody. And unfortunately, that doesn't work. And the third thing is they get really excited, they start doing something, and then suddenly it's no longer a shiny object, something else has come along, so they grab at that. So they're not consistent and they don't follow through. Fantastic. I like how you brought the, um, you know, being everything to everyone uh, aspect there because so many people start a business and they're like, yeah, anyone that needs this widget or this doodad, I can serve them. And before you know it, they've spread themselves too thin and now they're just spraying and praying with their marketing. Now, how can small businesses actually identify their ideal customers and effectively target them through uh, marketing? So there's a couple of different ways. One is to think about your best customer. So if you're already having um, got a business, you've already got customers, 
then who is your best customer? Who is the customer that always pays on time, is easy to deal with, appreciates what you do, takes advice if you're in the advice type game? Think about that person and how can you amplify that person? If you're only just starting out and you don't have customers already, then think about what the customer might like to be. So if you're following your own journey, it could be you five years ago. What would you have wanted five years ago that the you of today can help out with? Fantastic. You're absolutely spot on on that, especially when somebody looks at what they're going through right now, usually nine times out of 10, somebody else is going through that. And obviously, if you can find solutions to that particular thing, you literally can create for and relate to an audience that actually can, um, you know, support you in the future. Now, you did mention that when somebody's starting, you know, that usually is that time where everything seems to be overwhelming. And, you know, people just end up executing on whatever is the biggest shiny object or the the squeakiest wheel, um, you know, in the cart. Could you share maybe some sort of common mistakes that small to medium businesses, um, you know, or small business owners make when it actually comes to their marketing? Well, you actually touched on one of it before is trying to be everything to everybody. So I love the Facebook analogy. If you think about Facebook, Facebook started in one university on one campus. Once they got that sorted out, they went to a second campus. When they got that sorted out, then they went to other universities and then world domination. So if you can tailor your marketing and your business to one type of person with one service, get that sorted and then offer other things. If you're trying to offer 10 things, you're probably going to do not so good a job a little bit badly on two or three, maybe one standout, and it makes it much more difficult for a customer to go, oh, you're the blue widget person. That's where I need to go for this. So when you're looking at these people that have a huge range of products, they normally didn't start that way. Unless you've got, you're actually selling products, so you might be selling something of a low value, then you might need to have a few. But even with that, think about what complements that. So if you're a cafe, for instance, and you're selling coffee, do you put biscuits with that? Do you then give a gluten-free option? Do you then give a, a different dietary option? Do you bring in tea? What is it that you can bring all around that same thing? Don't be selling coffee and then think, right, I'm going to be doing smoothies all in the one go if there's only one person there. Wait until you've got that coffee sorted and then you can expand your range. Fantastic. What you just touched upon there sort of skirts around authenticity because if you're going to be showing up in a way that really is who you are and what it is that you can serve your audience, it makes it easy for people to raise their hand, like you say, and say, hey, I'm the one. And I really value that um, you know, sentiment. And now you also touched upon Facebook having started off um, you know, as as for one college, and then it just started expanding and things of that nature. And they really chose their demography first, and they were very authentic about that. Now, in your opinion, what sort of role does authenticity play in marketing, and how do you, um, how can small businesses sort of achieve that? I think it's everything. You can't be who you're not. So I love the quote by Marie Folio that says that. Why try to be somebody else? Because they're already taken, badly said, but you get the idea. You can only be you. If you're trying to be somebody else, you've got to have a very, very good memory because you've got to remember how you showed up and who you showed up to. If you're just being you and true to you, some people are going to love it. Fantastic. Some people are not going to like it. And that's equally as good because that way, you are going to then actually repel those people and they're not your people. So it's no point spending all this time and energy trying to be somebody that you're not to attract people that don't want you because that's how you go bust very quickly. 
Oh, I love that. And especially the Mario Folio um, quotation that, you know, everybody else has taken. You know, there's only one Kathy Smith out there. There's only one Prosper Tarubinga out there. And a lot of people are now going to be trying and say, okay, so maybe I should just, um, you know, start recording podcasts. I should also do like Kathy. But Kathy has 200 podcasts behind her because she's got the cadence. She's got the work ethic and she knows exactly um, what she's doing. But what you brought up there was something um, remarkable because you made, um, you know, reference to uh, another entrepreneur and it just shows that you obviously are surrounding yourself, you know, with people that are, you know, doing stuff in the entrepreneurial world there. How important is it for entrepreneurs to surround themselves with maybe the right people, um, you know, and continue learning, especially when it comes to marketing? It's essential because we can't possibly know everything ourselves. So listening to podcasts, as you mentioned, so my podcast is Small Business Talk, just about to hit 200 episodes by the time this one is out, so that will be fantastic. Um, But we can't know everything about everything. So hearing different people's opinions on it, hearing how they've made things work, hearing how it didn't work, you might hear that they did a podcast and you go, oh, that's not for me. Or they might be a YouTuber and you go, that's not for me either. Well, that's fantastic because you know not to put your energy there. So you might be into blogging. You might be somebody who likes to write. You might want to do short content. All of those things gives you an idea on where your genius is. So listening to other people, seeing what they other do, what others do, mixing and matching it, flavoring to taste is how you become a much better person. But remember, don't try to get everything from everybody as we've been talking about. Just pick one or two, see how you go. Sometimes you outgrow people. Sometimes new people come into your sphere. But don't try to learn something from absolutely everybody or you'll just be overwhelmed. Fantastic. And thank you so much uh, for that, because it's really, really important for people to understand. I mean, even if you're a chef, if you start copying other people's recipes, you don't know what else they add, um, you know, to the actual recipe to get the presentation that they do have. Now, you're a marketing coach, right? And um, as a marketing coach, um, Kathy, what, what sort of specific strategies or tools do you offer to maybe new coaches and um, uh, maybe consultants out there to really help them market their services effectively and how best can people get a hold of them? So the first thing they need to do is actually get in front of people. So people get bogged down in, I've got to have another certification, I've got to get a new tool, I've got to learn that tool. Everything has to be perfect. And the problem there is that you never actually get in front of real people. If you don't get in front of real people, you can't use your coaching ability, you can't tweak it, you can't change it, and you'll never know whether you're actually going to be a really good coach or not. Having said that, one of the tools I really love, and it was made here in Western Australia, so I'm from Southern um, Australia in Western Australia on the West Coast, is Canva. Canva.com. It started in Perth University, would you believe? So there's a free version of that and there's also a paid version. But that's a really great way to get really high quality social media. It's also a very big rabbit hole and you can get stuck in it for a lot of time. So please be careful. Sitting on Canva all day, every day does not mean you're a business person, but that is a fantastic tool because you can do flyers, you can do social media, you can do all sorts of different types of artwork that you can use then to put it out there. Not a tool per se, but something that really works well for all small businesses is consistency. Pick one area that you're going to market. So it might be Facebook, it could be Instagram. You mightn't be doing online at all, but whatever your core thing is, make sure that you're consistent and you're doing it regularly. Fantastic. And, um, you know, it's it's quite remarkable. Now Canva is, you know, um, very world famous and everybody seems to be talking about it to just think that it was actually made in our backyard there. So it's, it's, uh, you know, it proof 
is in the pudding there that no matter what it is that you start, it could actually become something that a lot of people can work with. Now, you also have what's called a marketing roadmap where you are working with coaches and um, is it consultants um, as well there? How does it actually benefit coaches in their marketing journey? That's a fantastic question. And if I can just go back to Canva just for one second, yeah. is that Canva, once again, like Facebook, didn't come out of the box and didn't suddenly emerge and be the success it is today. It took a lot of years. It took some investment. It took some real grit to make that the worldwide name that we've got now. So sometimes you need to actually put those steps in, the, the hard work and persevere. So if you've got a really good idea that's not quite working, then maybe you're almost at the top of the hill. Maybe you just haven't quite got there yet. So sometimes it's a case of not giving up because you can almost see the view. And to answer your question, yes, I have the Coaches Marketing Roadmap. It's a 10-week course and we teach coaches how to market their businesses because what I'm finding is a lot of coaches learn the art of coaching. They learn how to coach, but then they're just put out into the real world and gone, okay, how do you get clients? And that's where they struggle. So we're teaching people how to use their passion of coaching and create a thriving business. Absolutely. And um, for those that are going to be looking forward to, um, you know, connecting with Kathy, I'm going to be putting all the information in the show notes there just so that, um, you know, you can get a hold of this uh, coaching marketing roadmap. Now, obviously, Kathy, we've touched up on a lot of things we you know discovered how you got started you know when you left your job because you 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 had your baby and what you're doing now helping people understand and make sense of the internet world what can people expect now that they know how to get a hold of you and you know and what can they then expect to either learn from you or uh connect with you around um, that you're working on right now that could excite them to really want to uh, jump on board with what, what you're working on? Fantastic question. I've got lots of ways you can connect with me, all the, the normal socials. So you can come to my podcast, Small Business Talk, and hear me talk more about these sorts of topics and whatever happens to take my fancy. So things like price, what should your price be? How should you market yourself? Where should you be marketing? All those kind of things. Then I also have great guests. So that's one way that you can listen to what I'm doing. Check me out on all the socials or come down to my website, kathysmith.com.au and have a look at the blogs and the things that we're doing there. Fantastic. And if we did not catch you on a marketing podcast and you were just relaxing and enjoying uh, your day, what would we have found Kathy doing today? If it is summertime, you would find me hanging out at the beach, either swimming or walking my dog. Fantastic. Well, there you have it, guys. Kathy Smith, she really uh, knows what she's talking about. Coming from the yellow pages to the infinite scrolling pages that we now have on the internet. And that's about wraps up another insightful episode of the Online Prosperity Show. Big thank you to our guest, Kathy, for sharing her expertise and shedding light on the world of marketing. And if you're a small business owner looking to maximize your marketing efforts, be sure to connect with Kathy and explore the services that she offers at Catco Enterprises. And remember, your business success is within reach. And when you have the right marketing strategies in place, you can create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Kathy, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Prosper. I've enjoyed our chat. Fantastic. For those that are watching, until next time, stay prosperous. Bye for now.